this is our shakedown cruise of the NASA pod. We are camping at a friend's house in, near the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in North Carolina. And let's go take a look at the setup. Okay, so in the foreground we have our dog's little playpen, basically. Uh, and then behind that we have the Easy Up with our Honda backed up under it one day which will be replaced by an electric truck of some de design hopefully and in the Honda you can see there are two coolers these two coolers are Ghost Sun Chill this is a Ghost Sun Chill and this is a Ghost Sun Chillist the next generation this one is just a refrigerator and has stuff in it and then of course this one is a refrigerator and freezer and this one is running on solar power right now this small solar panel is keeping its battery charged and even if the power drops out from say a cloud passing over the Sun battery keeps everything going the other one is plugged into the casita over here with this little special weatherproof plug weatherproof 120 volt outlet with USB ports and the reason this is on the front I installed this is because well we have the weather station here and the weather station it's self-powered by solar has a tiny solar panel on it but soon I'm going to have an air monitoring station uh, connected to the mast directly below this weather station and it will be have to, have to be powered by usb so its cable will come down the pole and then plug into here now of course this will only be deployed when i am uh, at um, festivals and such or doing educational programs um, pretty much well really everywhere when i use the pod so from here we can see the array collecting solar energy right now keeping the batteries charged running everything everything is powered by the Sun that was the plan wasn't it then coming back inside this awning system we have our little cooking setup we made some breakfast of vegan sausages here they are cooling off and this is by the way a solar table as well made by go Sun if we needed it we can plug that into uh, batteries and other devices and charge them up on this table but we don't really need it we have so much solar on the roof there's my, there's our little puppy Tangy hey say hello <laughs> and here we have our seating area my wife Marion is doing her favorite thing of knitting <laughs> and um, above her head you can see the fan chugging away keeping the interior cool below the fan we have this little setup here this is the charging station I spoke about earlier we've got uh, EVSE in if we need to charge on a uh, electric vehicle charging station at any time on the road to fill up the batteries and then of course an outlet like the one I showed you earlier a USB plug charging my phone and then a 12 volt outlet as well in case we need to power anything by 12 volt now let's go inside so inside you can see uh, we haven't changed much since my last video uh, but but we're using it and we're using it basically the same way that it's going to be used when we do festivals multi-day festivals uh, you know one person will sleep here so it's a small bed you know so my wife and her and the dog will sleep there and then I will sleep on this little pallet down here of course when I'm doing a festival by myself we'll have the animals um, and they'll be stacked up here stacked up here and one of the coolers will be in the middle and it would just be me on the bed at night it's gonna be an interesting adventure to see how all that works <laughs> we haven't even done that yet but oh yeah here's the weather station showing current conditions at the site over here we have the 
Servo GX interface showing us our battery state, which is 99% state of charge. We're making 1,200 plus watts of power charging the battery, uh, only using 19 watts of AC and 33 watts of DC to run the, one of the two coolers and the cooling fan over here and the lights and the weather station. That's it. It's 80 degrees in the solar electronics cabinet. The fans are most likely on already. Yep, cooling fans are on. Let's take a look inside. So, last time you saw this, this was not finished. There was no door here. This door was not complete. So I'm sure it looks a lot better than it did. And I added these snaps for security when driving so the doors don't bounce open. And it looks basically the same on the inside. I installed a piano hinge for the hinge for that door and some magnets. And down here, unchanged. And we'll probably put some magnets on the inside of that door as well soon. And of course up here, unchanged as well. Bathroom. We've given it a good test and everything works. We are actually camping in the Great Smoky Mountains area. We're not in the park, but we're close. So the map bandana is applicable. So yeah, not much has changed in here, but let's go outside and look at the setup a little more. So we had some early morning sunshine. So we set up this nice little, um, curtain to help block the sun until the sun gets a little higher and then our overland vehicle systems awning which we finally were able to deploy on this trip it will start really coming into its own we've used it for the last couple of days already on this trip and it has been wonderful it casts such a wide area of shade and it's going to be perfect for when we start doing presentations at schools and camps and so on this summer and it it sets up in like five minutes takedown takes a little longer but hey it's worth it keep it set up for a while and wow that creates a really nice shade area uh, to get folks out of the sun out of the rain and our tables will be in a different configuration when we are presenting at multi-day festivals and um, also just you know multi-hour festivals there'll probably be one table up against the wall uh, where marion's sitting that one will have um, the animals on it as well as maybe one more. And the pen that the dog is in now will be somewhere in the area in the vicinity with tortoises. That will be the tortoise adventure pen. Coming around this side, you can see we are connected into a private water source. And the water comes from up on that mountain on a spring box uh it's totally spring fed gravity or gravity fed uh, spring water system that runs all the way down underground here and we are taking advantage of that wonderful water so this side of the pub we won't really be using for uh or during presentations um, but uh, it's where all the utilities hook up uh, as you can see we have the fresh water coming in city water connection although in this case it's definitely not city water it's country water and uh, the brass um, fitting to the lower right is a drain. At the lowest point, it's the drain uh, point for the entire water system for in winter and such. And then up here we have fresh water out if you want to fill up your mug or such or your canteen. And then, of course, gray water and sewage. So this port is for shore power. So our shore power connection is in place, but uh, it is not wired in yet. We're still waiting on a couple of components to get that connected, but it's not imperative at the moment since we make so much power with solar and we can still power the Casita with 120 volts through a um, extension cord. But when this is complete, it will allow a 50 amp shore power connection twist lock style as you can see 
and a uh, through an adapter a 120 volt um, what 15 amp or so uh, 120 volt outlet connection as well and then of course we have the water heater system here Here's our water heater, which is no longer gas. As you can see, the gas has been removed and it's 100% electric. No more 12 volt either, it's just, elect just 120 volt electric. And the final port is fresh water, fresh water gravity feed. So if we're off grid and we don't have any city water, we can just gravity fill it up using a funnel or a hose however you want to do it. And uh, we haven't tried that really too much yet. Maybe we'll experiment with it later in this trip. And then up on the front of the casita, is the spare tire mounted where the gas bottles used to be and that's pretty much it so this is basically how the pod will be set up at uh, multi-day festivals although our tables will be in a little bit different arrangement the uh, animal pen will be in another arrangement maybe a little closer to everything and uh, we will not have as much of the human accoutrements, you know, the cooking gear and all of that visible. It will be packed away and only used when needed for short duration events, such as at camps and schools and such. The awning might not even need to be popped out. You know, if I can park it under trees where it's shady, there's no need to pull the awning out if it's a nice day. But if there's, uh, there's not, we'll pop the awning out and go from there with maybe one table with a microscope and uh, of course the the microscope station isn't even in place yet uh, we will eventually have a um, flat screen monitor that can be mounted on the outside of the vehicle not sure about where i'm going to put that yet and uh, that will allow uh, interface with a microscope the weather station and of course the air monitoring station when that's installed let's take a look at the setup from the air Thought I would come in and take a peek at the uh, battery state. We are now full, 100%. Now, how is that gonna change when I turn on the air conditioning? Why don't we try that out? So 
as you can see, the wonderful Victron system, as soon as it detected that it needed more juice from the solar arrays, it pumped up the watts. And now we're kicking out over 1200 watts and coming in from solar, going to the battery, going to the DC, being inverted and going to the AC loads for the air conditioner. Only around 400 plus watts. Now, if, uh, if we were connected to an AC source, you would see the, uh, this section would be showing how much we were bringing in from an AC source, but we're not since we're connected purely to the sun. And that's just cool. We're running on a fusion reactor 93 million miles away. Plugged into the sun, super cool. Or super hot, depending on how you wanna look at it. By the way, you shouldn't look at the sun. It might hurt your eyes. Let's take one more look at that wonderful Victron system. Here it is. We have yet to test out this system in the rain, so we do not know what to expect, but we hope that we're gonna be okay with all these awnings and uh, umbrellas and such, but I guess we'll find out. By the way, this is a Ghost Sun product as well, the Ghost Sun umbrella, which works with the Ghost Sun Chillist, the second cooler I was telling you about, the one on the right over there. It's pretty darn cool. That little solar panel as well is part of the Chillist system. I'll demonstrate that sometime. There's a lot of solar, as you can see. In fact, even the music is coming from solar. A little solar powered Bluetooth speaker. That's a little solar fan. Charging up for use. So that's it, that's, that's how the system sits today. We will be improving it over the next few months and painting it. Um, I believe I have chosen the paint, but I'm not 100% sure. I will be sharing more about that in the future. And yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has made this possible. This is an incredible adventure, and I'm glad to have you along for the ride on this incredible adventure going wherever we go. Uh, and yeah, so I will be sharing more videos in the future of the system, how it works, even uh, programming in the field. And uh, yeah, look forward to more. The air conditioning's run, been running for about 10 minutes and we're still at 100% on the battery. Even though we're drawing 671 watts from uh, the air conditioner, solar's still beating that by a mile. Awesome. Now, it'll be interesting to see what happens on a uh, overcast day, a rainy day, but today we're making every bit of our power from the sun. That is cool. I just powered off the air conditioner to see how things would respond and you can see we dropped back down to 19 watts on AC 
200 and two or 300 watts on solar and we're still at 100% SOC on the battery. Okay, this is our first rainstorm in the pod. It's raining pretty hard out there right now. Pretty windy too, look at the trees. Not quite sure what to expect. Are we gonna have any leaks? Let's go take a look. It does. There's quite a bit of water coming between the Overland vehicle systems awning and the standard um, shade awning there. We've got a good funnel going here. That was one thing I read about with using these. You want to kind of create a little valley so that they can shed water nicely. Doing really well there. As well as all of the other areas of the awning. Back here on the Casita, we have a little bit of leakage coming down over the window. But that's not a big deal, really. It's just very minor, and it's not a problem because it's running straight down. And then when it hits this little gutter here, it just sort of... I guess that'll run off eventually. Well, we have the weather station up there. That'll tell us how much rain we get in this little shower. That's going to be really neat. It sure is cooling it down nicely, though. It got up to about 85 today. I do see one thing that might be an issue here. See how this water is running down and then sort of leaking down along this seam? There's a seal behind there. Hopefully that seal will keep the water out. Um, and of course I sealed this very heavily, but only time will tell. Luckily the way this wall bows outward, the water will tend to run it won't spray in there's no way it can spray in so it'll seep in and then run down the interior of the wall or drip down and it misses all of the vital components whoa that didn't miss a vital component i backed into this waterfall went right down my back <laughs> anyway so the water misses all the vital components of the victron system and you can hear our storm overhead Well, this will be a good test of the seaworthiness of this door system. So let it rain for a while and then see what we find. And you can see up there where the rain's coming in. All right, going back inside now. 
Hey dog. What you doing? I know you don't like storms. It's a little creepy for you, isn't it? I'm sorry. Yeah. But in here, it's nice and comfortable. Air conditioner set at 70 degrees. Still making 117 watts of power, even in a storm. That's pretty cool. Too bad we can't capture lightning. Oh, you found a comfortable spot, didn't you? We had to give her a tranquilizer because she does not do thunderstorms at all. So it's raining pretty hard now. Thunderstorms moving over our position. What kind of output are we receiving from the solar array? We're still making 89 watts of power, even with the heavy rain. We are using more than we're making, but look at that, our battery state of charge is 98%. Amazing. We came through the storm without any leaks, as far as I can tell. Storm's moving off in that direction. And we're getting some light from the sun filtering through the clouds. And uh, as you can see uh, from the uh, servo screen, we are producing quite a bit of power still. Using a little bit more than we're producing, but that's to be expected after an event, an atmospheric event such as this. Let's take a look around the outside of the vehicle and see if everything looks to be in ship shape. The awning held up just fine, of course. It's solid. Solar panel's got a really good washing, and that, that's really good. We really needed that. Had a lot of pollen on them. I'll have to check and see how much rain we got. I'll go inside and take a look at the uh, weather station's console in a moment. Fairly dry underneath. There's a few areas you can see where rain ran through, ran down, but uh, the solar modules are like a giant umbrella. A little bit came down here. This is the area that I'm worried about. But we only see here where the rain came in. Not much at all. A few drips. So let's, let's open things up and take a look inside and see if everything is dry. Does not appear to be any rain on the inside of the seal. Dry all the way around. On the bottom, a little bit is here. Oh, there's some here. Now, this did get inside. Not much, but did it go all the way in? You can see down here, there's a little bit of water. Everything does look dry on the inside of the compartment. Oh, this is nice. Everything is totally dry. Oh, that's great. I was really worried about the system. Now, it didn't rain for, you know, 45 minutes torrential downpour. But uh, this little test has given me hope that uh, the system is going to be watertight. And that our engineering worked. Let's take a look up here. Now, I can't see what it's seeing, but you can. I'm going to take a look now. Just reach up and feel the inside. Feels dry where all the rivets are. Yeah, all the rivets are dry. I really soaked it down with sealant. Uh, when I put this piece of diamond plate aluminum on, there's a lot of sealant in a band like this all the way across, coming down. So I guess it worked. 
nice. That was the one thing that I was a little bit worried about was this, this extremely sensitive equipment compartment leaking. And it looks like it passed, except for this little area we were talking about before. I might need to, uh, maybe that just, let's see. How does that, oh, okay, good. That's all that was. The water that leaked down around the edge here just had gotten up on the seal. So I don't think it's anything to worry about. We'll see. No air conditioning is needed today because it's so cool. Our coolers are working perfectly. Hey, little dog. <laughs> she doesn't like this weather at all. I will say that the awning system is incredible. Overland Vehicle Systems, you have done a great job in creating a wonderful awning that is strong and it doesn't leak. Uh, it funnels water off very nicely. It integrates well with other awning type devices. All we needed were some of these little clips and we built, built us a little uh, gutter system here that runs most of the water down and out on this end. So our test of the pod for camping purposes, for instance, when we do our um, multi-day animal programs and uh, animal nature and renewable energy programs, it's perfect. Uh, you know, there's a few tweaks we have to make in a few places and of course the paint job. But uh, after that, we're gonna be ready to go. So, wow, what an amazing invention. Thank you everyone out there who helped me make this possible. Without you, it could not have been done. Despite all that rain, we are still making more power than we're using. Close to an inch of rain today. And as you can see, we're almost to the middle part of the day with high sun, although we can't see any sun, but we are still making electricity. Don't need to use the air conditioner, 65 degrees outside. No need to use all that power up. It's around 7.45 on Saturday evening, and I'm out here cooking dinner in the ghost sun stove, but there's no sun. How am I doing this? How am I cooking dinner in the ghost sun stove? Well, I'll show you. So the ghost sun doesn't need sun. I mean, it, you know, it is a solar powered oven, right? But you don't need sun. Sun to use the ghost sun. The sun has a heating element underneath and this cord runs all the way, whoa, all the way over here to this outlet on the side of the pod and this outlet is providing power to the heating coil on the ghost sun stove. So 
in a very short time, the veggies will be nicely cooked, uh, maybe about three quarters of the way cooked, and then I will add the salmon. Down here we have some salmon that is thawing, has been thawing for a while, and it should make for a really nice salmon and veggie dinner. Meanwhile, let's take a look out here. The skies are very threatening, thunder all around, and my lightning tracker map is showing there's lightning all around us as well. Of course, if you have thunder, you're going to have lightning, right? Let's just hope it stays on the other side of the ridge. Because I have some cooking to do. Let's get down to business. The rain is starting. But luckily we have an Overland Vehicle Systems awning. And that pop-up shade tent there. Hopefully between the two we will be mostly dry. Aside from the little, little waterfall that comes down between the two here. I'll have to work on that. Due to the electrical storm outside, we decided to move our cooking indoors. We brought the gas stove inside and set it up on the uh, counter where we would normally have the inductive cooktop. Decided to not use the in inductive cooktop simply because it is supposed to rain all night and all day tomorrow. So we don't know how much solar production we're going to get. Uh, and so we're going to use uh, ba the backup uh, propane this time for cooking the salmon. Outside, the veggies are still cooking in the Ghost Sun stove that I showed earlier. Um, and then we're going to combine the two and have dinner later. But uh, I, we're really beginning to see how our uh, exhaust fan works really well when cooking indoors. It's drawing out all the fumes and moisture from the cooking salmon that we're trying something unique here. We're cooking salmon all spiced up in tin foil. A little bit of water in a frying pan. Let's see what it turns out like. Not really sure. It's kind of going to be poached. And then over here, there's how much we have in our battery 96%. We're using 214 or 18 watts of DC power to run our two uh, freezer refrigerators in the uh, tow vehicle outside and power the Ghost Sun stove and run all the LED lights and fan. And then 81 watts of AC. Actually, that AC is what's powering the uh, the two uh, Go Sun Chill coolers. But it is dark outside. Uh, the time now is around about eight o'clock. It has gotten quite dark with the massive storms around us, and of course, it is getting close to night. But uh, it's been raining now for about 45 minutes. And uh, the, we've had some pretty serious uh, electrical activity in the atmosphere over the last few minutes. So that's why we decided to move inside. Right now it's kind of a calm between the storms, I believe. But there is a lot more coming. I am going back inside. We don't need this on, save power. Just checking to make sure that was closed. Nice thing is we don't need our air conditioner. It's uh, the temperature outside has dropped quite a bit when the storms moved through and the sun went down. And so we're not gonna need our air conditioner. Maybe not even tomorrow. The temperature's predicted to get in the 60s, high 60s. So we'll probably be fine with that. About 96% on our battery at about 20 after 8, and we will see it again in the morning and see how much we have for the projected dark rainy day ahead. 
And there's the finished product. Poached salmon and basically steamed veggies cooked in the Go Sun stove. Time to eat. Most of the rains have passed through. It's calm for now. There's more rain coming. It's about 11 o'clock p.m. 92% state of charge using about 60 watts of DC and 22 AC to run those coolers out on the truck. Let's hit the sack and see where we stand in the morning. So this is the third morning of our camping adventure in the pod. And uh, we woke up this morning and had about 82% uh, of a charge in the battery and uh, weren't charging much at all for a couple of hours. But now that the sun's getting higher, it's around 1030, I believe. Um, we're actually making over 400 watts, despite the fact that it's been raining and overcast all morning. Let's go take a look outside. Still raining, a nice steady soaking rain. The pod stayed dry last night, no leaks. We used the cooling fan to keep air circulating, kept the windows cracked. Um, we did have one small leak in one of these windows, the window on the other side over there, but it stopped leaking. Uh, we'll probably reseal both of these, all three of these windows just to be safe, just with some silicone. And as far as the solar electronics cabinet, I need to take a look in there and see how things look. Okay, looking inside, I see no water anywhere on the seal, except for here at the bottom. And that is not a problem. A little bit over here as well. Just on the seal. Let me look inside. Everything is dry. That is very good. Very, very good. I'm going to feel on the inside. Nope. Nice and dry. All the rivets are dry. Under here is dry. All right, we're good. I think this uh, makeshift hatch door worked. <laughs> That's a very good thing. All right. Well, hello, puppy. How you doing? <laughs> hey. What are you doing? What? What are you barking at me for? <laughs> Uh-oh, don't bite that. That's a honeybee. You will be sorry if you bite that honeybee. <laughs> There's a honeybee inside the pod. Oh, boy. What is she doing? Strange little dog. <laughs> so this gap is causing a little bit of an area of uh, dampness here in the back of the pod. Uh, it's just because the awning does not go all the way up under the solar array or at least close to it like I was hoping it would um, and that might be something I can adjust I need to call the company this week and find out the company that makes this overland vehicle systems awning but you know it's not a big deal it works great so we're making 150 watts of power or more and we're only using about 19 watts on the AC side and 42 on the DC side. Uh, so we're definitely making more than we're using. So hopefully we'll be able to fill that battery up by the uh, end of the day. But we're also still in low power mode, you know, just uh, being very conservative about what we what power we do use. Got all the lights turned off. I'm just sitting outside reading because it's pouring the rain. Not much else to do today, but it is really nice that the uh, the casita is dry. We have we have found no leaks, 
other than that one window we t I talked about earlier, and it is not leaking anymore. It was leaking under here. And it's totally dry, so that's good. 